Sí. Hey you out there in the cold getting lonely getting old can you feel me Hey you standing in the aisles with itchy feet and fading smiles can you feel me Hey you don't help them to bury the light in without a fight Our adolescents and teenagers are in the grips of a mental health crisis. Current problems include depression, anxiety, self-harm, and a very high level of teen suicide. Fact: Ireland has the fourth highest teen suicide rate among high-income countries in the world. Fact: Female teen suicides are at a 40-year high. Fact: LGBTQ, traveler and other ethnic minority group teenagers are particularly vulnerable. These problems are now so prevalent that they're not only damaging the current generation, they are threatening future generations and are establishing a significant reservoir of adult mental illnesses. Teenage mental health problems and the consequences are not isolated and separate from those of society. The challenges of social media, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, bullying, body image pressures, academic pressures, and relationships among peer and family are all important. So addressing the underlying causes in both the society and the individual would have to be part of any solution. The environment in which society currently tackles mental health is through the healthcare system. Treating problems that arise, clearly, this is no longer sufficient on its own to contain the growing situation. So, if we wish to stop this crisis escalating further, we need to change our approach. A change of perspective which looks at prevention rather than just a cure would be helpful. But more than that, more than just dealing with problems or preventing a mental health crisis, we need an approach that will give our youngsters the opportunity to live their lives in a more positive, happier way. We need to find a way of bringing more joy and happiness into their lives. So today, I'm proposing a new approach to teenage and youth mental health, which sets out to achieve all of these aims. Rather than directly addressing the issues of depression, anxiety, self-harm, this approach targets the underlying root causes of mental distress. Self-criticism and self-doubt in the individual. Intolerance and lack of acceptance in society. This approach is based off modern neuroscience and requires a shift from the healthcare to the education in its widest sense, as well as active engagement of society and its leaders if it's going to work. Neuroscience has shown us that education can equip our minds with mental tools which we can use to modify our brains, rewiring them to react differently to life's challenges and protect against mental health problems and distress and foster the conditions needed for well-being and happiness. This approach is particularly well suited to the teenage brain, which undergoes rapid development during adolescence. Educational training practices which encourage the development of mental tools such as self-awareness and self-acceptance assist youngsters in creating mental calm and resilience. Many of these are well established in the UK and the USA. Unfortunately, in Ireland, they're not as widely available. The ideal time to begin these educational programs has been shown in the UK and the USA to be during the middle childhood period, before the age of rapid adolescent brain development. There is no point in teaching our children self-development tools if parents, teachers and society in general are going to be reluctant to accept the changes in the way that youngsters view themselves as they grow up. Call me naive, but I believe in the basic goodness, empathy and compassion inside of every single one of us, and that each and every one of us not only wants joy and happiness in our own lives, we want even more for our children's lives. And I really believe that we can make a difference if each of every one of us is prepared to actively engage with this new approach by becoming more tolerant and accepting. This proposed approach isn't going to happen by chance. It's going to require leadership and guidance, especially in schools where teachers will have to introduce teacher-facilitated initiatives. The media also has a very important role to play. Currently, the media plays a huge role in shaping our society, but now is the responsibility to resume its traditional educational role as well. 
So let me give you some examples of where its approach to teenage mental health is already working. In 2015, the UK government released its Mindful Nation UK report on mental health and public policy, the first of its kind by Western government. Based on reviews of existing school programs, it confirmed the value of simple mental awareness and acceptance practices being taught, which it said had increased youngsters' capacity to respond to life's challenges and live their lives with greater care for themselves and others. Since 1972, the country of Bhutan has pursued a policy of gross national happiness to expand the happiness and well-being of its people. To specifically support the psychological well-being, gross national happiness programs introduce simple mental training practices in awareness and acceptance for all school children from the age of seven years, and, in, and in established local community forums which encouraged all-inclusive societal acceptance. In 2011, the United Nations General Assembly urged member nations to follow the example of Bhutan, calling well-being and happiness a fundamental human goal. Promoting the well-being of citizens is widely regarded as a primary goal of national policy in practice. In principle, however, decision makers fear that they will have to choose between the competing priority of overall citizens' welfare or maintaining a sustainable economic growth. However, research in 2018 found that this is not the case and that countries can make the overall priority of their citizens of their overall welfare, their top priority, while still maintaining a sustainable, robust economic growth. So in conclusion, mental health and the potential for happiness is a fundamental human right. And I believe, through this fresh approach which I've outlined, it can both help the current generation of young people and adults living through this crisis, and give hope to future generations of youngsters and adults. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. Because if we don't act, there's no hope. Are we going to take a positive step into the future now? Or continue to spiral down the rabbit hole, losing more of our young people and watching our society disintegrate? The future depends on what we do today. Yesterday's news is